Now you're welcome along. So there is plenty to get into. Champions Cup semi-finals are very much upon us. The URC quarterfinal lineup has been finalised. Ulster Connacht on Friday, May the sixth. Leinster have the Sharks on sixth of May, and Glasgow Munster is on that same Saturday evening after the weekend that was. Ireland this weekend will hope to avoid a wooden spoon away to Scotland as well and the Six Nations in Edinburgh on Saturday evening. So it's all going on. Brian O'Driscoll, you're very welcome. Thanks, Joe slash Wally. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide you were going to open I, I, with that? Do you know what I saw when I walked in? <laughs> when I walked in, I said, is it red and white or is it blue and white? It's <laughs> actually red and white. Is it? Yeah. But it's like slash sailor. Keith Wood but. did say I look like a sailor, actually. I seem to have worn this on the two occasions that you two were in. Okay. Yeah. Well, very good. Well done. It's good to bring the rugby humour to the airwaves at times. Uh, You're going to say. <laughs> uh, it's all going on. Leo Cullen. I, 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 wasn't, I wouldn't have said ordinarily that I have to start with a Leo Cullen press conference. <laughs> but here we are. So Leo Cullen doesn't usually do a Monday press conference. There was a change of plan yesterday. He marched on in there and did 30 minutes. His first answer was six, seven minutes long. And he was in rare form I think it speaks of uh, the sense of maybe tension in a healthy way in the Leinster camp this week so a whole host of things I'll just fire some at you for instance hype was a big theme he talked about perhaps the younger Leinster players felt the love and the adoration after beating the Lions and they didn't handle that all that well when they went to the Bulls and lost 62-7 so he was asked if that could apply to the more experienced senior team and he well he went full John Kiley uh, is the truth John Kiley um, after the Waterford game at the weekend which Limerick won he said let's be honest about it there is some amount of bullshit spoken about our team this week it's a softening up exercise mentally from those outside of the camp but we're around a long time so I mean that's really building a siege mentality from <laughs> from not much so Leo Cullen has said of the situation it's just disrespectful to everyone we play against, isn't it? I'm sure it's just winding up the narrative in their minds. The hype, it's week on week on week. We're up against the best teams in Europe. Toulouse are the most successful team in the competition. They lost at this stage last year. What do you think their motivation is? It's through the roof. You're up against top teams and they'll only lap up all that media stuff that you guys have delivered. Journalists glance at the... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think the Limerick I, you know somebody obviously put the Limerick thing to him and he said well we won nothing last year Limerick won last year we didn't that's all I remember all I remember is the disappointment of losing to Marseille and losing at home in the RDS against the Bulls now there's more which I'll get to but straight away like so interesting the same week the, mo the two most successful teams in Irish sport and by extension the two most successful managers just having this sense of ugh, hype it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I like. I, I've watched Leo for a number of years, and you know, he, he he's given very little away for a long time. A bit out of the Declan Kidney um, notebook of of lots of voice notes, lots of um, segments, but actually very little said, very little detail, very little to kind of hang your hat on, and and so that's why you know, seeing that coming out on a Monday, I wouldn't have been aware that he wasn't usually a, a Monday um, press conference attendee. Um, but there's, you, you could look at this a few different ways. You could look at this um, where he's had a bite. Obviously, it's a preemptive bite for him to position himself on the Monday, but also maybe he's looking to take a bit of that pressure off his team. You know, that they were talking about him, that were, you know, the, the Jose Mourinho kind of thought process of, wow, this is different, but yet not focusing on the pressure that's unsurprisingly ratcheting up on this Leinster team. We've talked about it for a good few years now, since 2018. The reality is, by their standards, they have under-delivered since then. They should have more European Cups than they have. They should have won last year. You know, the one in, in St. James's Park in 19 against Saracens, you know, they could, could have won that. The circumstances that they found themselves in. Um, you know, other semi-finals in La Rochelle two years ago. Like, so all of these are big disappointments. And so what comes with that is extra pressure on them now, particularly the fact that it's Dublin, Dublin. Um, so for him to come out and talk the way he has, a little bit of messaging for his team, but also 
just to get everyone chatting about him and his press conference and less so about the pressure on particular individuals, I reckon. Mm. I reckon he's he's a very, very smart guy, is Leo, well thought out. I wouldn't say he, you know, he reacts angrily to situations and circumstances very often. Um, so, yeah, it's it's good to see, irrespective of what his rationale for speaking the way he has, it's good to see the emotion. It, it, it matters so much, but sometimes the, because he's such a cool customer, you don't always see that innate emotion in him, that he's he's very level in, in his ups and downs. So to, to see someone come out and fire a few shots the way he has is great. Mm. It's great. Makes him human. To give people a sense of some other bits and pieces, so he was asked uh, about finances. That's been a big talking point around Leinster of late. He wasn't asked about Richard Wigglesworth directly, but he did mention him. So Wigglesworth had talked about Leinster's uh, budget post uh, the Leicester win. And, I mean, and this is a bit of a drive-by. Interesting, said Leo. Obviously, Richard Wigglesworth had some comments the last day about us. Obviously, he came through at Saracens. <laughs> Full stop. Or Not quite, <laughs> but I mean, say let it hang. Uh, that's what you're up against. You're up against the top teams. It's so hard to win. And then he was asked if outright, do Toulouse and La Rochelle have bigger budgets than Leinster? I don't know. I haven't got the calculators out, so I don't know. And then he started talking about how French rugby, it's huge business. And he said, we're little old Ireland, small demographics. We're fighting as a minority sport here for young talent and all the rest. Then one of the journalists joked, is there any point on turning up on uh, <laughs> Saturday? <laughs> to which I think he laughed. I think he, uh, he took the point. <laughs> Little old Leinster. Anyone heard of Jack Nianabar? Coach we've hired. We're, we're hoping he's all right. Um, and he also, one last point then, uh, he, he made a real point, and I think he's conscious of how many games Leinster have at the Aviva Stadium, mm. of highlighting that this Saturday is very much an EPCR event where the starting price for tickets is €75. Euro. That make a lot of people think. And uh, he said, I would really plead to all Leinster fans out there to come out, support the team. That has to be a point of difference for us. So a real rallying. That's call. punchy. 75 starting. It's too much. That's very expensive. Yeah. You know, that's very expensive. I don't know what their kids' prices are not. I, but either did, I, did I read this 25,000 sold? Oh, you may have. I didn't see how many, where they're at. I think at. I read 25,000 on Rory O'Connor today. So uh, um, that's a real, can we get a move on here at all, everybody kind of call, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, it was always going to be difficult for this Leinster team considering Leicester game was there and with the knowledge that, particularly the way Leinster fans are at the moment thinking, ah, oh, we should be. There'll, there'll be semi-finals and finals, so we'll, you know, hold ourselves till the big one. Yeah. And, you know, because lots of people... You know, as well-to-do as many Leinster supporters are, there's lots of people that can't afford four consecutive friends 16 through to a final particularly with those prices if you're bringing kids and everything else that comes with it so um and you're traveling up from from you know outside of dublin like it's yeah I, I i can understand why there's always a rallying cry to try and get as much support as you possibly can because um because they're not in a final yet and don't wait to get there because th there is the possibility that there may be no final, albeit it will take some monumental performance from Toulouse, I think, to to, to beat the Sensor team. But, um, yeah, I, I can see this sounds like there's a lot of frustration in his voice. And, and I can understand that those ticket prices, if it's starting at 75, you know, you're, you're alienating a huge faction of, of supporter base on, on those grounds. Mm. You really are. Mm. So yeah, I, I sense frustration as well and I sense the tension of a week like this. I, I think there's some truth in what Rachel Wiggersworth is talking about. You know, I can also understand Leo's sorry. objection. We're, we're little old Ireland. We're, <laughs> sorry, we're sorry. fighting as a minority like, sport here. The, the thing is that like the, he, and Leo's come from Leicester as well and, and he said it too that they, they, they they bit off more than they could chew over in the in the club game in the UK. They, you know, they're um, paying beyond their means and so on. So yeah. they've had to, you know, they've had to take stock of that. They've lost two clubs this year. Like there's a significant impact happening. And so 
reduced budgets are going to have a knock-on effect to the quality of personnel that you're going to be able to attract. That's the world over. That's not specific to rugby. Mm. So, um, so there is, on the face of it, an advantage to teams that don't have budget limitations. Um, um, but, you know, from a French perspective, yeah. it's still significant, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, you look at... at Listen, I've seen numbers in the past. I don't know what the up-to-date ones, but they're they're huge payrolls, huge. And I, I'd imagine Ireland probably aren't a million miles away from it. If you if you factor in national contracts, provincial setups, and so on, you'd have to imagine it's, they're they're not, yeah, they're not millions and millions away. But I would still imagine that some of those French budgets are a little bit bigger than than what's here in Ireland. What I, is, I would think. Yeah, uh, from what you know of the Leinster culture in, in so much as it's probably changed since you're you're gone a while now but what's a week like this like will it, will it be all business Tuesday in the gym and around training fewer laughs a bit more tension or will it be like any other week for it, in the most part the, the, you're right about the first part Joe that it's become become second nature to them to be you know in semi-finals and finals and so I did have a flavour of that from from 09 onwards you know we did we won the the Celtic Leo Magners League in 08 and then you know we started doing finals and semi-finals con- pretty consistently until I retired in 2014 so we did get a sense of that but now that it's European semi-finals pretty much every year was yeah. it 17 was the last time they weren't in one which was a quarter final so there's um, it's it's commonplace to, to, to feel normal emotions there's excitement and particularly the fact that you're getting to play at home I think you know there's a little bit more stirring in you throughout that week just anticipation of about one step away from another final another shot at something that's avoided them or or that have uh, they've missed out on the last you know four or five years so um, but I think they're just such a metronomic type Mentality about you, just you, you yeah. Don't, you don't I think do. the ways of this? I is don't think so. Different. I really don't. Okay. I don't think so. I think they're just you know go through your all your process, be a good pro, all of that stuff, and the and the emotion layer is layered on match day on top of it, um, and you enjoy that. But if you can get all of the functionality side of things and the detail right of training and no roles and all of that side of things, then the elevation of the of the atmosphere and and the occasion and the moment brings your performance to another level or certainly that's the hope um but then you've got the variable of the opposition of what they throw at you the intensity that they bring you know the physicality that they bring and then some days you're just on it and some days you're not quite so there's that's why Len, you know Leinster have cruised to semi-finals in Europe and the and the um, URC for a number of years now, but it's totally different at semi-final final level. That's where the difference between teams is significantly reduced, um, and and I don't think it's any different. I think you know you'll see La Rochelle getting into the final and have had Leinster's number, and Toulouse will have a point to prove. And I think they're an improved Toulouse team on last year. Also, they won't have had you know the quarter final that they had against Munster in their legs the, the previous week you know previous week you know extra time goal kicks the emotion of yes. that the high lows that all takes its toll as well and and then Leinster were in a complete you know, we're in such a groove against them from the off in that semi final i just feel as though there's more in this to lose team but yet i don't know if there's enough to beat a Leinster team that clicks and where is it you think Leinster have the upper hand I I just think the general game plan, the lines of running, the um, the the comfort of playing through phase. I think they've got they've got vari- huge variety. Toulouse have good variety themselves. They've got a big pack, but I I think the 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 detail around angles of running for me is a big one for Leinster. That's how they create opportunities of everyone understanding their role, not not missing a line, not missing the timing of a run, not foregoing something kind of, oh, the, no, one will come the next phase it's like the 
how close, I'm not saying they get close to perfection every time, but they get close to real quality each time they find themselves in a moment to make a difference. Right. I think that's their point of difference. Where if you look at, I look back on the Leicester game last uh, this morning and Gary Ringrose's first try, okay, this, he scores it after a little over a minute. Catch off, the, get, regain possession off the kickoff, all through multi phase, you know, six, seven phases. And then they play out the back and it goes to Ross Byrne. And the line that um, Ross Maloney runs to stick the inside defender, I think it's George Martin to create an opportunity for Ringrose to throw the dummy and use Hugo Keenan outside him. That, those moments are the difference. Ross Maloney's line is magnificent. Perfectly timed, totally viable option, could have gotten it, had to be respected, ran with pace. And that's the detail that maybe people don't see that is the impact for Gary Ringrose and for others to take effect. Um, and so for me all of those micro moments over the park is the difference I think you'll find with other teams that sporadically six or seven players will be doing things consistently well but I don't think you have 15 doing them very well running selfless lines um, you know offering up working hard around the corner guys like Hugo Keenan and Larm will be playing at the weekend their energy to work from one wing to the other to create four on fours into five on fours that's their point of difference there you go. That was uh, but a taste of the full rugby conversation. As usual, you can get the full chat wherever you get your podcast. It's waiting for you right now.